Hello and welcome to this edition of Chuck's Culture Channel. This time around, I'm talking with Peyton Riley, who plays Sandy Lester in the musical stage adaptation of the hit film Tootsie, which opens a two-week run at the Fabulous Fox here in St. Louis before moving on to other venues across the country. Check the video description box below to see when it's coming to your town. With a score by 2018 Tony winner David Yazbek, whose credits include The Band's Visit, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, and The Full Monty, this New York Times critic's pick was dubbed a joyful delight by the Washington Post. But before we talk to Sandy, let's watch this quick video teaser for Tootsie the Musical. <laughs> Okay, and here we are live via Zoom with Peyton Riley. Peyton, hi. I'm glad to see you get over your technical problems earlier and are able to. <laughs> hi, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> now, um, I already explained to everybody uh, what your role is in Tootsie, but you know, let's talk a little bit about Tootsie the Musical. As I said before we started recording, I have not seen it. So I don't know what the differences are between uh, the original film and the stage version, and also specifically uh, how your character differs between the two. Yeah. Well, I think what's so special about Tootsie is that it is such a beloved film that we have so many super fans of the Dustin Hoffman movie from that time. And, mm -hmm. and I think what we've done a really good job adapting it to the stage is, you know, we've stuck true to the plot. We've stuck true to the characters, but we've delved deeper and we've brought it to modern day. So not only are we appeasing those audiences from the 80s, also the new generation of people coming to see this show, they recognize things that they know and they see. So we've really done a good job with that by placing it in modern day but we've also needed to figure out well how do we take this movie and bring it to the stage because film and stage are two completely different platforms and so in the original movie Dustin Hoffman auditions for a part in a soap opera mm -hmm. and he dresses up as a woman to get the part because no one wants to work with him well it's the same idea in our musical however he's auditioning for a part in a Broadway show so we're able oh, to incorporate the singing and the dancing through the Broadway musical within the Broadway musical and of course he does it's the hilarity ensues with him trying to live the double life well where my character comes in I'm also trying to be an actress on Broadway but I can't get a part not because I'm opinionated or hard to work with it's quite frankly, because I'm not very good. And um, I <laughs> love him. He's, you know, my ex-boyfriend and my friend, and I look up to him so much. I come into the start of the show with an audition. I said, you said you were going to help me. Can you please walk me through this piece? I'm freaking out. He does it, and then he does it better than me. And I'm like, well, great. You're even a better woman than I am. And that's what gives him this idea. So he dresses up as the woman, he gets the part over me, yada, yada, yada. Well, I'm on the side of things where I don't know that that's him. And so he's trying to live the double life. So if I'm coming into the apartment and he's dressed as the woman, they got to quickly figure out how to get him back to being Michael before I enter. There's so many scenes of him just trying to figure out how to live the double life. And it is so much fun to watch. Okay. It, it does sound like it. And it sounds like, yeah, you are sticking pretty close to the original plot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, again, I haven't seen the musical. Do you have some solo numbers of your own or, or what? I, I assume you oh, have. Oh, yes. I get to sing this song that is quite the marathon. It's very, very fast. And it's essentially me saying, well, I don't want to go to the audition because I know what's going to happen. And then I just rattle on for like five minutes straight of all the terrible things that are going to happen to me when I go to this audition. 
and it does keep coming back throughout the show <laughs> and it is so much fun to do and every single person not only actors know the feeling of self-doubt and spiraling and I think that everybody can listen to her song and have a great time because they <laughs> they understand what that feels like oh yes I, I was an actor for many years uh, <laughs> I loathe auditions, so yes. You're going to love my part. You're going to love <laughs> Sandy. I recall liking Sandy a lot in the movie also. I, oh, so, yeah. There you are. We've just uh, been able to, when you give characters time on stage to sing through their thoughts, you really get to delve into that character's heart a little bit more than you would in the movie. You know, you just get a little more time with her, a little more, uh, a little more time. I'm to understand what she might be feeling all the time. <laughs> so um, what is this like for you then as an actress? I mean, I, I know everybody approaches their part differently, but uh, how, how did you how did you prepare for this? How do you approach it? Yeah, well, I'm not acting. Um, it's just the truth. <laughs> no, we came off of the <laughs> we got the tour. We casted the tour during a pandemic. I don't know if you remember, there was this time where we were all quarantined. And oh, yes. we all thought, oh, there's going to be no theater. So I was under the impression that I was never going to work again. And I think that that frustration was so easy to tap into when auditioning for this. And while, by the way, while I was auditioning, I was being Sandy and I was like, well, what's the point? Because this isn't gonna happen. And blah, blah, and it was like the exact character. So I'm not really even acting out there, but uh, it, you know, thinking you're never gonna work again or thinking, you know, it's just so frustrating knowing that you know, this isn't gonna happen. Well, that just tapped right into the material. And yeah. it, was, it was so much fun. And I think that once we finally got on the road, you could feel how excited we were to be on the stage. And you can not only feel it from us, but from the audience, because it was, they didn't think they were ever going to see a show ever again. Mm -hmm. So it was just really, really exciting. It's a, it was the perfect time to be auditioning for a piece that's really a love letter to theater. And I'm excited to bring the show to St. Louis because St. Louis is such a theater loving town and like everyone understands what it is to be to be a lover of the of the stage and um I think our show does a really special job of you know if you love theater and you know there's inside jokes about what it backstage shenanigans and okay. different things like that 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 I think that the St. Louis community specifically is going to really enjoy. Well the yeah the whole theater in joke thing has become quite a mini industry uh yeah. <laughs> both on the musical and non-musical stage uh yeah lately. definitely so, yeah and, and you're right uh, st louis has a very active theater scene not many people know this but i mean we have a a huge number of companies in huge. town yes yeah uh, uh, st st louis the muni and you guys have webster university like there's a lot going on i know all about it oh okay okay <laughs> you have do you have any st louis connections or is or what no, just one of my best friends. She went to school at Webster, and oh, okay. um, so she's worked at the Muni. She's worked at Stage of St. Louis, and um, it's been a place that's on my bucket list to work at. And I'm so excited to bring the show there and see what that community's like. And um, and I'm and then I'm going to be putting my foot in the door at the Muni and things like that later on in the future. So I'm I'm really excited. Okay, yeah, the the Muni is an experience unto itself. I know some people who work oh, there. Oh my goodness, are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. pleasant. Well, this is great. So um, you've been touring with this show now for how long? We're going on 400 performances no. for those of us who have done both years. So, you know, we started in 2021, mm. at, in September of 2021. And then we've been going really ever since we had a couple months off, but we're back on the road for the second year, the second round and um my fiance has joined now the second year and it's been oh. so much fun to be able to tour with him and experience all these cities and it's been really really special so yeah so this is going we're going on 400 so it's, it's basically been two years okay you kind of answered the next question i was going to ask which is you know how you balance a personal life with being in a touring show but 
I, if, I don't think I could have done this this specific year back on the road without him because we actually are planning our wedding. We're getting oh. married September 30th. So uh, that's been quite a challenge is trying to plan that wedding while being far away from where we are even getting married. And we've had to make a lot of blind decisions. And um, mm -hmm. we're going to be just as uh, surprised as our guests at the wedding. Oh, wow. Look at that. Because <laughs> we actually have no idea what we've chosen. So that's going to be really interesting. Well, congratulations, by the way. <laughs> so glad Thank you. you. Well, you know, because a lot of people do find it hard to to maintain any kind of decent relationships in the kind of job you have. So that's great. It's, it's really challenging. And, and Tootsie even talks about that. You know, our two main characters, Michael and Julie, they really connect over the fact that they've had to choose their careers over relationships time mm -hmm. and time again. And I think that's also a theme. You know, it is it is really tough and it takes a really unique person to be able to find that balance. Yeah, it's a tough choice, isn't it? Because you ultimately have to have to balance between having a normal life and being in showbiz. And the two are, to a very great degree, not compatible. They tend to butt heads quite a bit, yeah. yeah. Now, <laughs> it, here's a question, and maybe this isn't really in your wheelhouse, but um, Tootsie, of course, is about female impersonation. And we have a lot of uh, wackadoodle state legislatures who have been passing laws uh, <laughs> against what they see as the major issue confronting the United States these days, which is yeah. odd, but are, are, are the producers at all concerned about uh, bringing the show to places? Well, we the were, city, we were, we, there are certain places where drag is banned. And like Missouri. I don't think, yes, and I don't think that people understand what that means. Like, they don't understand that that means that this our tour has drag in it and 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 that's not even being told we're not even being pursued by that like no one has said hey you can't come here anymore because this isn't even what they think about and that's what's wrong that's what's wrong is that this is doubtfire a movie that is beloved by so much that is also drag like people mm -hmm. need to be uh, people need to be educated on what drag performance is and I think that's the issue yeah I, yeah. I, I agree. And and the laws are so, I don't want to get too political, but I mean, the laws are so broadly drawn that they're easily used in a discriminatory fashion. So 100%, 100%. And you know, is a story of love and it is a story of female empowerment and it is a story of loving who you are and accepting who you are in so many ways. And I think that that's such a beautiful thing and a beautiful message. And I'm so proud to be sharing it. Oh, that's great. And, and it's a message you need to hear more. I agree completely. Yeah. Uh, well, this is great. Now, I'm going to be posting this, of course, uh, while the show is in St. Louis, but it's going to be a yeah. lot of other places. So I encourage everyone watching this to check the video description field down here and see where uh, Peyton and Tootsie are going to be when you watch this, whenever that is. So pay attention to that. Um, it's going to be at the Fox. We open, let's see, you guys open on the 21st of March. And, and we're there for two weeks, so you've got plenty of time. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. At the fabulous Vox in St. Louis. Uh, Peyton, thanks so much for joining me. Listen, before I wrap this up, is there anything you really would like to say that I have failed to ask you about? This is always my last question. I think that I just want to encourage people to know that, that Tootsie is truly a laugh riot for two hours, and it is such a special time to come and escape from your day-to-day -day stresses and laugh with us for two hours. You will have such a good time, and it's totally worth your ticket. I promise. Great. That's a good way to wrap this up. Peyton, thank <laughs> you so much. Thank, thank you, so, you much so much for joining me here on Chuck's Culture Channel. And again, folks, uh, please share Chuck's Culture Channel on the social and anti-social media. Uh, let people know we're here and I will see you next time. Adios until then.